drive against Democratic New Deal opponents, the president at Barnesville, Georgia, opposes Senator George. Some have given lip service, lip service to some of the objectives, but have not raised their little fingers actively to attain the objectives themselves. That was FDR on the campaign trail back in 1938, railing against opponents of his New Deal economic reform. He claimed big business was refusing to create jobs to destroy his New Deal. He also blamed Wall Street for many of the nation's economic woes. Does that sound a little familiar? It might. might to some of us. Our next guest says the president will use similar messages in the campaign for 2012 and has already started, in fact. Paul Moreno is a professor of history at Hillsdale College. So, Professor, uh, we kind of just went on the surface there. Uh, dig a little deeper for us. You're the historian. Why do you see these comparisons between FDR and the president as far as their campaign goes? Well, FDR and Obama were both confronted with a, uh, a double-dip recession. Uh, Roosevelt had been elected in uh, 1932, and he was able to blame the Depression on his predecessor, Herbert Hoover. But in 1937, uh, we had the so-called Roosevelt recession. And uh, I think some of the methods that uh, Roosevelt used in attacking uh, plut plutocrats and uh, going after the 1% the of his day, uh, President Obama finds himself in a uh, similar situation with an intractable economic problem. You mentioned in your article in the Wall Street Journal the Brown Scare, that we all know about the Red Scare, but very few of us know about the Brown Scare. Tell us a little bit about that. I think our viewers will be curious to know about it. Yeah, during the 1930s, uh, although uh, many people have pointed out that some early New Deal measures were themselves uh, pretty similar to those of the, uh, of the fascists, uh, the corporatists in, uh, in Italy and Germany, uh, by the late 1930s, Roosevelt had taken to accusing his political enemies of being uh, fascists. Uh, you had a clip just before of uh, Roosevelt going after uh, Senator Walter George uh, of Georgia when he was trying to purge uh, the Democratic Party. And that term was used as, as being sort of redolent of what uh, uh, Hitler and Stalin uh, were doing. And Roosevelt tried to turn anti-fascist sentiment uh, in the public against his, uh, against his political enemies. And um, the historian Leo Rabufo uh, has referred to this as the, uh, the Brown Scare. And it's been forgotten in the aftermath of the, uh, uh, the Cold War Red Scares. But uh, the liberals were attempting to use uh, domest uh, domestic fear of foreign uh, fascism for uh, political purposes. Did it work? I mean, the fear that you mentioned for FDR, the fear of uh, big business or vilifying Wall Street, did it work for him? Uh, no. Uh, in fact, the, it probably saved the Republican Party in the 1938 midterm elections. Uh, the party was just about extinct, and they won about 80 seats in the House of Representatives. And it, it really backfired so badly that it, it brought the New Deal to, uh, uh, to an end. Uh, it was combined, of course, with Roosevelt's attack on the Supreme Court uh, in 1937, his attempt to purge the party, this vilification of, uh, of big business. It made Roosevelt look like he was uh, a potential dictator. It's very interesting. You point out in your article as well that he had to go out and publicly say that he didn't want to be a di dictator. He didn't want to do that in order to quiet the, the fear in the public that maybe that's what, he, that's what he wanted. It's interesting to take a time out just to look at history for this moment, Professor. Nice to have you. Uh, thank you, thank for, you. for taking the time to join us today.